research for us that will, will allow, allow us eventually to uh, implement plasticity uh, mechanism that tends to be stable in a, a freely behaving uh, virtual or robotic agent. And that's exactly what we want to do in phase two. We want to embed this mechanism uh, progressively into the large scale uh, whole brain structure. Uh, the main project is called MONETA, which stands for Modeling uh, from Modular Neural Exploring Traveling Agent. Uh, the acronym stands uh, for uh, the term MONETA also mean, uh, means uh, money in Italian and the goddess of memory. And you can uh, also imagine that this is a particularly interesting acronym. Um, the phase one uh, objective is the creation of a whole brain system embedded in an intelligent agent which is capable of navigating a virtual environment and replicating getting some key role in behavior. Uh, what we are focusing on in phase one is a, a classic uh, rodent experiment which is called the Morris water maze and the idea here is to drop uh, of the experiment is to drop a rat in a water tank and the rats do not like to swim and they try to reach uh, a submerged platform which is invisible to them as fast as they can and the idea is for the rat to learn uh, where the where the particular platform is by looking uh, by using a four uh, very simple landmark in the in the environment which are four uh, fairly simple simple geometric shapes and you, you can notice that as a result of learning the rat is able to shoot through the, uh, um, uh, through the water tank directly on the submerged platform uh, faster and faster. So in order to simulate uh, even this apparently simple uh, biological task, you need a variety of different brain areas uh, which work together. So you need, for instance, uh, a fairly sophisticated sensory system, which is capable uh, of object recognition, among other things. A motivational and reward system that, is a, a, that enables the anima to get a goal or select a goal in the environment. And the spatial representation that allows the anima to self-localize uh, self uh, in the environment and plan a route towards the goal. So these are the three main uh, modeling areas that, we, that uh, are part of the uh, Moneta microcircuit, which is, of course, um, interface with, with the virtual, vir virtual environment. You can see here a little bit more details. Each one of these boxes is actually, is actually a macro box that contains uh, additional, additional areas within it. And you can see that um, there is a functional explanation of which one of these box and also a, an, attached, uh, um, a, an attached biological counterpart. For instance, retina, visual cortex, higher order visual cortices, um, cor uh, frontal cortex, uh, subcortical areas devoted to uh, navigation, for instance, the, the hippocampus, motor cortex, etc. So the way we develop this model is the following. So we start from a whole brain circuit. We uh, take apart all the three uh, major subcomponents. We develop them independently by fixing the communication protocols between uh, the various brain areas. And then we reassemble it together and test it in, uh, in the virtual environment. And uh, this modular approach allows us to basically, by fixing this communication protocol, to swap in uh, different brain areas as their level of refinement increases throughout the project. Um, this is an example of uh, uh, some of the uh, some of the areas of Moneta. In particular, this is how the sensory uh, system looks if you um, from the perspective of our software development platform Cogex Machina. Uh, the details here are not uh, important, but uh, what's important to notice is that each one of these boxes is defined in terms of linear and nonlinear transformation, which is a guarantee that for us, once uh, the hardware is realized, they can be embedded in, uh, in this high-performance memory steam engine. Uh, this is a snapshot of uh, a subset of the visual areas uh, of the animat as it moves uh, through the Morris uh, water maze. We have here color-based uh, attentional subsystem that are basically the, whose function is basically to allow the animat to shift its attention uh, to various parts of the images and allow the online classifier to uh, learn and classify this def the different objects it encounters in the environment. Uh, the motivation and navigation system that um, uh, compose Moneta are a cluster for simplicity uh, in this in this slide, and this is based on the work 
by one of us who is actually here, Anatoly uh, Gorchestikov. And the idea of uh, the navigation system is to use uh, is to use spreading wave activity in the hippocampus, which is a subcortical area uh, uh, believed to be responsible, one of the main areas responsible for uh, spatial navigation. And and, just, and and the basic principle is to use the collision of uh, spreading waves of activation between uh, in a neural population, of course between uh, the point, between the, um, the representation of the input, uh, the representation of uh, uh, the cell representing the current position of the animal and the, and the goal location. And the collision of this wave will determine the shortest path from uh, the location where the animal currently is and, uh, and the goal. This is how the simulation looks like. We have a virtual environment, uh, the motivation and navigation subsystem here. Uh, these two traces represent the neural activation of uh, uh, two neurons, one representing a selected goal and one represented a suppressed goal. goal. And uh, the four panels on top represent uh, the spreading wave of activation between the current location and the goal location. Uh, this is a, a slightly more detailed uh, diagram of what we are trying to do in phase two. Uh, you can see that as we progress through phases, the brain becomes uh, more and more complex. Uh, red areas uh, are the one we are going to implement in phase two, which include, uh, other, among other things, uh, audition, so both auditory uh, localization and classification, uh, proprioception, and uh, uh, more complex uh, motor actions. Uh, what, what's not shown in this uh, diagram is that each one of the boxes introduced in uh, phase one is also going to be uh, progressively refined in phase two. What we are interested also is to test aspect of moneta and robots, and uh, this is not because we want to inflict as more pain than necessary, but we believe that basically bringing these uh, uh, whole brain system models to uh, and interface them with a real environment will help us also to progress on the basic science by uh, dealing with the same kind of problems or reality that the biological system ultimately deal with. And uh, the very first project we did a few months ago was to take part of this uh, large-scale brain system, uh, the, the Moneta brain, a very small subset, which basically is a saliency map, uh, and imp visual saliency map, and implement it in, the, uh, in a robotic platform, which uh, by not, was no chance that is actually an iRobot uh, create platform with a netbook on top. And uh, the idea here is to use the netbook uh, for two main purposes. Uh, the first purpose is to uh, use it as a uh, to enrich the input of uh, um, uh, of the robot, so we have a, a robotic sensor plus uh, a webcam uh, to uh, to basically give uh, vision to the robot. And the second is to use the netbook as a wireless hub between the robot and the, uh, and the server. And the server is where Cogex Machina is installed. You know, our our machine usually have a, a couple of GPUs, so they're able to implement a discrete amount of uh, computations uh, within the workstation. So the brain is implemented in Cog receives sensory input and then produces motor commands that are shipped to the netbook and the netbook then uh, controls the, the robot. Uh, this is uh, uh, our uh, uh, an example of what of the kind of uh, task we, we try to do. Of course, this is not uh, the most surprising or the most uh, uh, amazing uh, robotic demo that you will ever see. Uh, but the idea here is not to uh, to surprise people, but is to test whether uh, the architecture, whether the, we are able to implement uh, in a in a fairly seamless way, uh, uh, progressively larger scale brain models in a, uh, and and interface them with a robotic platform, and that this test was actually uh, successful. Another thing that we are interested in is, of course, education. So we are uh, a university, and we are trying to make sure that the tools that we develop uh, can actually be used to, to uh, train and enhance the career of uh, the next generation scientists or, or engineers. And uh, I'm actually teaching a new class, which is coming to an end this week called uh, CNA 10 and uh, when you mix uh, you know PhD students and uh, uh, you know f fairly economic uh, and uh, um, uh, adaptable robots and sprinkle them with the COGEX machina uh, the uh, the results tend to be uh, exciting and uh, the project that the class came up with was a, a fairly complex one 
uh, not if you think about uh, the, the particular behavior, but uh, if you think about the underlying uh, brain structure that they thought about implementing. So uh, the idea here was to combine audition, vision, visual and motor learning in order to navigate around obstacles and reach a multimodal uh, target, which in this case is a target that has both auditory and uh, uh, visual components. Uh, the brain system that the class wanted to implement has uh, uh, many different boxes, many different uh, uh, modules. Uh, the one that actually implement the plasticity are uh, underlined in red. So we have audition, goal, uh, uh, we have an auditory stream and the visual stream, uh, both uh, uh, inputting into a multimodal representation, which then goes into uh, a motor system which also receives uh, feedback from uh, the environment. Uh, Audition, for instance, has uh, uh, multiple multiple uh, modules. Uh, we have an out a spike based uh, a spike based auditory uh, localization modules and uh, uh, a classification modules that uh, basically uh, provides the system with the ability to localize uh, sound and classify it uh, in real time. Uh, the second box is multimodal representation, which uh, allows the system to learn how to combine visual and auditory uh, representation in order to uh, produce a better estimate of uh, the, a target position in the environment than uh, each one of these uh, senses uh, uh, independently. The third is motor learning, and the idea here is to use uh, a process fairly similar to uh, motor babbling in infants, where, they, when, where infants learn to uh, uh, coordinate their visual system and their motor system in order to reach uh, target in the environment. And similarly, the idea in this, uh, in this um, motor babbling stage is to uh, learn what kind of um, uh, will, what kind of velocities applied to the wheel help uh, provide the robot with the ability to uh, reach uh, a particular point in the environment or a particular spatial coordinate. Uh, what I cannot communicate with this slide is the enthusiasm of uh, the class. So uh, when I first uh, joined the, the field of neural network, the thing you know, the, the thing that you could expect to accomplish uh, in a particular, uh, say, in a, in, a, in a day was to run, for instance, a backpropagation network and uh, solve the XOR problem. Uh, nowadays, people who take uh, uh, this class or you know that they face a new uh, or they just start a PhD program in our department uh, can see within their reach within their, for sure, their lifetime, but also within their uh, the time in which they graduate, the ability to uh, implement a large-scale uh, whole brain system that can be eventually in, uh, implemented in mobile uh, in mobile chips that can be embedded in the mobile robotic applications, and that's of course you know a whole new level of motivation for uh, for the student that is creating a lot of uh, excitement and uh, good vibrations. Uh, the future plan is to introduce uh, to to to, uh, to, uh, to introduce uh, more challenging uh, rat experimental um, uh, rat, rat experimental paradigms in Moneta, uh, and also to in introduce uh, new senses, audition, or new uh, brain areas that help, for instance, uh, planning in uh, in more complex environments and competition with uh, other agents uh, in in, a, in an environment which has a limited amount of resources. The last project I want to briefly touch uh, upon is ITEM, or Iterative uh, Evolution of Models. The goal here is the creation of a software for automatization of model exploration, tuning, verification, and reporting. And for anybody uh, of you who has done, uh, uh, you know, attempted to uh, model even, say, a single cortical areas knows exactly what I'm talking about. Uh, building these models is a tedious process. Uh, there are many parameters, uh, even in a single cortical areas. When you try to uh, implement multiple multiple cortical areas or a whole brain system, the number of parameters and possible model uh, variation models becomes uh, becomes ex becomes unmanageable. And the idea here is to uh, streamline this process and help uh, to uh, take the human out of the loop as much as possible. And that's the basic goal of the project uh, called ITEM. Uh, the basic intuition of item is to start from a pool of different uh, neural models uh, which have uh, uh, an introduced variation in them, variation in parameter, architecture, connectivity, etc. Uh, the second stage is to iterate through this model until uh, a best candidate model is found and then pass this back to the experimenter who had the chance to use his time in a different way.